I think he asked Big Bill Brunzi. He says, Big Bill, that blues music you play, is that, you call that folk music? And Big Bill says, well, I never heard no horses sing none of it. Howdy folks and welcome to Horses Sing None of It. My name is Ralph Litwin. I'm here with my co-host Lou Gelfond today and our special guest for today is Tony Trishka. And uh, we'd like to welcome you to the show, Tony. Nice, nice to nice have to you. Nice to be here. And Tony is, uh, for those of you who, who don't know who Tony is, Tony is uh, in the bluegrass and banjo world, one of the best known banjo players and most respected innovators in the banjo Field. Uh, I guess they call it new grass is what you, is that a fair? <laughs> well, it has all sorts of different names. New acoustic music, new grass, modern bluegrass, modern banjo, whatever. Choose your name. Choose your name. Anyway, Tony's been one of the great innovators in this field and uh, he's known all over the world for his banjo playing. He's traveled around and uh, we're real thrilled to have you on the show today. Thanks, Ralph. It's really nice to be here. So uh, what, what's your latest projects that you're up to nowadays? 
Well, the latest thing I've been working on is a, uh, a record for Rounder Records, or it's actually a CD or tape, whatever the format you <laughs> care to nowadays. choose. And it's, um, it's a solo banjo project. I'll be doing a few tunes from that here today or tonight, depending on when you're viewing this. Uh -huh. And uh, it's only banjo, just banjo, and I'm sharing the, uh, the disc with Bela Fleck, who used to be with the New Grass Revival and has his own fantastic band now called the Flecktones. <laughs> Great banjo player. Bela Fleck and the Flecktones. But anyway, it's solo. He plays solo when I play solo. Uh -huh. Sounds so great. That should be coming out sometime later in the spring. And uh, I'm going to be doing this triple banjo tour, as if one banjo isn't enough. <laughs> triple banjo tour uh, in late January and early February with a banjo player named Tom Adams, who used to play with the Johnson Mountain Boys, for those of you who are bluegrass fans out there. And another banjo player from California named Tony Furtado, who plays with a woman named Lori Lewis. So mm -hmm. we're going to be touring up and down the West Coast and the East Coast. So you're going to be doing some trio work in that? A little bit, yeah. Three banjos, no waiting. <laughs> so it's a little rough, but uh, no, it, it actually sounds sort of good when you're all playing together, chugging along. Yeah, well, we, we'll maybe try a little duo stuff at the end of the program. Great. So uh, what, what did you want to play for us now? I thought I'd start off with an Earl Scruggs medley. Earl Scruggs is kind of the spiritual father of uh, all bluegrass banjo players everywhere. And I'm going to be doing uh, three of his tunes, starting with, actually, the first tune is written by Bob Dylan, who never was a bluegrass boy, as far as I know, uh, although he did sing a duet with Bill Monroe once, who was the father of bluegrass. And it's a song that Dylan wrote called Nashville Skyline Rag, and Earl Scruggs made it safe for the banjo. I think it makes a much better banjo tune than a guitar tune. Just out of curiosity now, what, what duo was it that, that Bob Dylan sang with Bill Monroe? I can't remember. Somebody told me the story of them getting together and doing, <laughs> maybe it might have been the lonesome sound of a train going by. Was it recorded or just at a festival? No, just, some... just backstage somewhere. <laughs> Bob Dylan came up and met, you know. Right there, folks. The just a little bit of folklore for you right there. You'll, you'll probably never hear that anywhere else. Somewhere out in California. <laughs> I think David Grisman introduced Bob Dylan to Bill Monroe was what the routine was, and, and Bill Monroe was more interested in the length of David Grisman's hair and complaining about that than <laughs> being fascinated by me meeting Bob Dylan. So, little minor musical aside there. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so the Nashville Skyline Rag, then two of Earl's tunes. The first one's called Ground Speed, not to be confused with Ground Round, and then uh, another tune called Shuck in the Corn. So you'll have to imagine... Flatten Scruggs and all the Foggy Mountain Boys kind of kicking in behind all this music instead of just one solo banjo.
All right. All right. Oh, and those hot fi- licks. Your fingers never left your hands, boy. <laughs> Not the last They're time still, I looked. They're still, still there. Attached. Now I know when I went, why when uh, uh, traveled overseas, and you traveled overseas quite a bit. You've, you have traveled uh, overseas. You said you were uh, in France a while back. Right. I was in France in 82 and 83, and there was your poster in, in, these, in the, like, people's rooms, just like really large posters. I guess you had just been on tour over there in that t- around that time? Yeah, I was traveling with... Um, around that time with a group called Skyline and even before that in the late 70s with uh, Danny Weiss who used to be in Skyline and the two of us would go over there and play with some French musicians and uh, France had a pretty thriving bluegrass scene for a long time surprising yeah up in the, the town of Brest in, in, uh, in all of Brittany I, I, your name would come up all the time and, mm-hmm. and, uh, and you were one of the bluegrass stars yeah. in France you're an American you must know Tony Trishka <laughs> <laughs> Right, bluegrass are, in, in the states we kind of take it for granted, but the expertise that we have here is really appreciated overseas a lot more than here. Here it's got its strengths, but over there they really appreciate it. Yeah, I, I find that I mean it's it's appreciated over here, of course. But um, I had a chance to go to Czechoslovakia in let's see, eighty-eight and eighty-nine. Eighty-eight was Skyline, and eighty-nine uh, last year doing a solo thing and playing with the Czech band, doing a little both. And I've never had such a warm response as I did in Czechoslovakia, partly because the name Trishka means splinter in Czechoslovakia. And <laughs> my great-grandfather came from a, a town called Liberec in the northern part of Bohemia, which might explain why I'm a Bohemian banjo player or something. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, the people over there just were like, you know, standing in line for like literally 45 minutes to get autographs and things like that. That's not bragging, it just shows the level of enthusiasm. They were, enthusiastic, they were, yeah. they were at that point, still under communist dom- domination. So for them, they, they can't get records from out of the country. They can't, their money's you know, non transferable. So people would send records and instruction books over, and they would just Xerox or copy the tapes, whatever. And uh, there's a very strong uh, acoustic music scene in Czechoslovakia. Okay. Surprising. Well, time to book ourselves a tour. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> right. Let's go. go. Well, we've got to take a pause now for an announcement. So we'll see you in a few minutes, folks. Horses Sing None of It is sponsored by Banjo Man Entertainment, 201-538-2432. The booking agency for Ralph Litwin, Lou Gelfon, and many others, Banjo Man Entertainment, 201-538-2432. HIV and AIDS. Man, I'm tired of hearing about it. Like, I really have to worry about it. I don't do drugs, and I wouldn't sleep with anybody I didn't know. There's no way I could get HIV. I swear, if I see one more thing about HIV, I think I'm gonna die. You could be putting yourself at risk. Welcome back. We're here with Tony Trishka, and uh, I think you've got a new banjo here. Why don't you, you want to tell us a little bit about it? This is a borrowed banjo, actually, but it's a nylon-strung banjo, which has a much mellower sound. 
and I'm not using finger picks, just bare fingers, and it has no resonator on the back, just an open back. And I'm going to be playing a tune in the classic banjo style, which is a style that was popularized in the really at the turn of the century, but it had its heyday from the 1860s to about 1920 or so. And uh, some of the very first Edison cylinders were banjo music. And these guys were sort of the, um, the uh, Michael Jacksons and Madonnas of their <laughs> era, which is almost incomprehensible today. So, um, and there's a whole body of music that was written for the banjo in those days. A lot of ragtime tunes, marches, and like classical music, things like that. So it's kind of like excavating, going back to these, finding some of the sheet music and uh, checking it out. Yeah, you can find this banjo society, a number of banjo societies. Yeah, and, uh, right. I'd run across the old banjo newsletters. And they had things like the Red Rover March and all kinds of neat mm -hmm. stuff in there. Well, you're going to give us a taste of what tune that you have up your sleeve. This is called the Kansas Jig, and this dates again from around the turn of the century. Dramatic endings. So, do you know uh, Dan Sinclair? I know Dan Sinclair. Dan is a, is an excellent uh, player in the classical style. Who lives in New York City, where I know Tony used to reside. Right. But now and you're I, New, now you're a New Jersey resident. Yeah, I've joined the Garden State. I don't, how long have you been playing classical? I didn't realize that you were doing that. Uh, let's see. It's hard to pinpoint exactly. I actually think I worked up a tune maybe 10 years ago. I have a, an instructional tape series with Happy Trom, uh, Homespun Tapes, and I recorded a tune on this advanced banjo workshop that I did for him called the Turkish Towel Rag, and then in parentheses, a rub down. <laughs> yeah, so good names for these tunes, uh -huh. needless to say. And that was, uh, that was on there amongst all this other more modern bluegrass kind of stuff. But I uh -huh. threw that in there, and that was probably the first one I worked up. But um, these things are all written out in music notation, so I had to learn to read on the banjo. I mean, I used to play piano, so it wasn't that hard a transformation. Mm -hmm. But they say, um, the joke goes, how do you get a banjo player to play more quietly? You put sheet music in front of them. So, <laughs> anyway, it helps. So now Tony is picking up his uh, bluegrass banjo here, but what you folks at home missed was that he retuned it. That's right. During the break. As if by magic. Yeah, I tuned the fourth string down a whole step so you get this nice low sound happening there. And this is a tune I wrote. And it's called 214. One of these tunes on the album that you mentioned? This one, that Scruggs medley is on there, and this is going to be on there also. Uh -huh. 
How many albums do you have out of your own now? I've got six of my own, and then another four with this band Skyline that I used to be in. Mm -hmm. And then this next one will be the seventh solo record that's going to be out soon, I hope. So this is 214. style that you're playing, you're using th three picks, do you ever, um, well you think of yourself as a bluegrass banjo player or you think of yourself as a, you're a progressive, how did you develop into what you are now? What, you what, is, what, what <laughs> road did you hoe? What, it's a, what it's kind a of playing question. did you start, start playing on banjo on? Well I started with bluegrass, Earl Scruggs is still probably at the heart of what I do. Basically, and who started t when you first started? Did you start by yourself? Did somebody teach you, or did you take lessons? I had lessons. I had lessons, but like I said, I, I started with piano and flute before I took up the guitar, and then finally to the banjo when I was about 14 years old. And I grew up in Syracuse, New York. I didn't grow up in North Carolina, where Earl Scruggs grew up, and so my background is much different. My father was a physics professor at Syracuse University, <laughs> so uh, again, it's a much different. Uh, background than what the traditional bluegrass guys like the Stanley Brothers or Reno and Smiley or Bill Monroe, Flat and Scruggs, where they started. So even though bluegrass captured my ear and my fingers, uh, I also heard a lot of other music like rock and roll, jazz, classical, and over a number of years that started seeping in. In fact, when I first got my banjo for Christmas when I was 14, a few days later I uh, just figured out how, how to play uh, Ode to Joy from Beethoven's famous Ninth Symphony. On the band, or just picking out the simple melody of it. So right, right from the very beginning, I was hearing other other notes besides the standard things. This is the tune I just played. Two fourteen is it has its basis in bluegrass, but it's a little bit uh, rhythmically more um, complex. Not a lot more, but there's a little more going on, and uh, the chords are a little more complex than bluegrass. So kind it, of kind of pulling in the best from a lot of different worlds. And that's what I try to do. do right. I, Calling on banjo, and you wind up with your own style, and you wind up with your own. Um, it's a vocation. It's like you, 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 you. I don't know if you selected this, but this kind of selected you, and kind of, yeah, kind of combination. Well, we're going to take take a little break and uh, be right back after this. Everyone makes mistakes, Matthew. <laughs> don't pay any attention to the other children. For this bright six-year-old. The ABCs have never been as simple as ABC. Where do you go when you're different from the other kids? He got help at a center for learning disabilities. They got help from the United Way. All because the United Way got help from you. The United Way. It brings out the best in all of us.
For free membership in the Horses Sing None of It Fan Club, send your name and address to Horses Fan Club, care of Ralph Litwin, 140 Morris Street, Morristown, New Jersey, 07960. That's Horses Fan Club, care of Ralph Litwin, 140 Morris Street, Morristown, New Jersey, 07960. to sing none of it and there's something you don't see every day <laughs> that's tony trishka playing on that banjo with a bow what what gives Tony? <laughs> what gives indeed well i had a chance to play um a, a percussion piece about four years ago with a guy named paul elwood he composed this piece for me for banjo and seven piece percussion ensemble and part of the show or part of the piece involved bowing the banjo there were all sorts of strange music but part of it had to do with bowing the banjo and he was just having me hold long notes for long periods of time and I just started experimenting with it on my own and just decided to work that up uh, is, that's a tune called Barbary Allen that I learned when I was a kid my parents used to sing me to sleep to that and so I hope you're still awake out there but uh, <laughs> felt like it worked well on the, on the uh, bowed banjo yeah that's a very eerie sound yeah it is well, we've got a tune that'll wake you up, I think. Yeah. yeah, we've got just enough time to say goodbye to you folks. We'd like to thank Tony for coming on Horses Sing None of It. Nice to have you on, Tony. Nice to be here. And I enjoyed uh, myself. We'll hope to see you next week, folks. And we're going out with this tune over the waterfall with this double banjo, whatever you want to call it. Right, from claw hammer and three <laughs> finger picking here. We're surrounded.